ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a fantastic week. Um, I'm excited to do some new music stuff today with you guys. So before we get to our new items for this week, I want to go ahead and review so the musical era stuff that we talked about last week, right? So I saw your Google Forms and a lot of you guys did a great job on your Google Forms and were very detailed when um, answering your questions about the medieval era or other eras, right? I appreciated all those that gave dates when I didn't ask for them. That was super cool. So we talked about this, right? Musical eras, also known as musical periods of time. So our first musical period that we studied was the medieval period. And that was from 500 to 1450, right? That's when we talked about Hildegard von Bingen last week, our female composer from the medieval era. This week, we are going to talk about the Renaissance period. And the Renaissance period, it fell from 1450 to 1600. So there was that year of overlap that we talked about last week, right? That each period, we're going to see a year of overlap from the last one. So some of you guys may have like gone to Renaissance festivals and stuff like that and maybe have been able to see how people would dress back then and maybe see some of the instruments and things that they would do, um, which is kind of cool how people like to kind of keep that tradition and see what times were like back then. So our music superhero is going to be from the Renaissance period, like I was saying, and our music superhero this week is William Bird. <laughs> you can't see it hold on <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you guys are saying oh crazy miss lisa all right <laughs> so william bird william bird you can see his um portrait right here and it's actually a little more a lot of the photos that i found were or um works of art that I found were a little more clear this time, which was interesting to see that maybe as like time went on, you can tell how things were getting more modern, right? So the art is more detailed and you can kind of see more detail in his photograph, his or his picture that they made of him compared to Hildegard von Bingen's, right? That one very much so looked like it was just a drawing. This one seems more lifelike and realistic. So he was born in 1539 and he died July 4th, 1623. He is from England and he was born and raised in a, in a certain part of England. And then he moved throughout his lifetime and just ended up staying in one area of England the rest of his lifetime. So just because he moved around a lot, we wanted to just kind of generalize it this week. So what did he do? Bird was an English organist and composer. He is the best, he is best known for developing the English madrigal. A musical madrigal is multiple voices in secular music. So last week we heard a lot of monophonic music meaning there was one voice. And this time, you're going to start hearing the development of putting different voices together and not having them sing the same thing, having them sing different things, which is really cool and was not done frequently back then. So this was new for them. This definitely was not kind of a common thing. So that's what a madrigal is. A madrigal is multiple voices in secular music. That means it's music not for the church specifically. As we saw, Hildegard von Bingen was an abbess, right? So really all the music she wrote was for the church. And that's how most composers wrote anyways. In the Renaissance period is really when we saw music being composed just for enjoyment of listening and not solely for the church. So he is also famous for writing keyboard music and he wrote music for the Anglican and Roman Catholic Church. So he wrote both. He wrote secular music and music for the church because he was passionate about both. Um, why did he do it? So Bird chose to compose because he enjoyed creating new music. 
He was one of the first composers to begin to blend instruments in a piece of music and create harmonies. So you'll hear, well, that's a little bit about him, you will hear in the piece that we're going to listen to today for our stretches, you're going to hear multiple voices singing harmonies, right? And we've talked about harmony before. Like when you guys sing, right? There was two voices going. We had part one and part two. And at times you were singing two different notes. So harmonies are when you have two or more <laughs> notes being sung or played at the same time because you can have more than two three four five you can split it into however many parts you want as long as you have sufficient voices or instruments so here is when we the renaissance period is where we actually start to see that begin to happen and william bird was actually from the um later renaissance period not necessarily right at the beginning when um, things really started to bloom. So you'll hear his music has a lot of movement as well. It's still going to be a little bit more. Um, this was a sacred song, so not secular. It's going to be church music. So you'll still hear that more um, cathedral-like um, aspect about it. All right, here we go. multiple voices right there was female voices there were male voices and if you go back and listen you can hear voices holding out like an ooh and then the other lines moving underneath so it really creates this beautiful rich texture within the music which is really cool um, and probably the most important thing we want to take away from the renaissance period all right awesome let's move on so um, we have talked about dynamics and I don't want to focus too much on dynamics this lesson, but I don't want you to forget them. Okay. So they are going to be in your Google form just as a review, but we're going to skip over that and see what we remember for next time. I do want to review our note values though, because most of us did really well on remembering the note values and how much um, each note was worth in a measure, right? But some of us kind of forgot. So <laughs> let's review. We have whole note, right? And whole note has how many beats? Four beats. Four beats in a whole note. And we count that as ta, or we can count it as raining rain drops or we can just say one two three four and you see how my voice stays connected when I'm counting them because I want in my head to remember that I'm not counting different notes I'm just holding out the same note for four beats okay next we have our half note Henrietta the half note and Henrietta is worth how many beats two beats so we can say ta, or we can say 
splish, right? We do splish, splash. That would be two half notes. Or we can just go one, two. Next, we have our quarter note. And our quarter note is worth how many beats? That's right, just one. This is our ta, right? Whenever we make a combination of notes with ta's and tt's, this is ta, one beat. Or what we would call drip, right? Or drop, either or. Okay, next we have our eighth notes. And sometimes we're not used to seeing eighth notes on their own. Remember that an eighth note looks like this by itself. So this is an eighth note on its own. So that would be T. But usually we put them together to make it easier to create a four beat pattern, right? So usually we'll just go with TT. But remember that on its own, it looks like this. So we don't want to forget. So, and each one, each eighth note is worth half a beat. So this one is half a beat. When I have two together, that means I have two halves, which equal one beat. T, T, half, half, pitter, patter, right? Okay, and then the note that we discussed last time was our dotted half note. And remember, the dotted half note was, oh, I don't want to tell you. You tell me. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. But remember, dot is half of whoever he's next to. And when he's next to Henrietta, the half note, we have a half, we know a half note is two beats. So dot is worth half of two and half of two equals one. So two plus one equals three. Yep. Three beats for a dotted half note. Don't forget that. So we did pretty good on creating a four beat pattern in your Google form. I asked you the question a little bit more um, tricky on, per in, on purpose, so in a trickier format. So I asked for a pattern of ta's and tt's, or ta, our half note, in 4-4. Four, four. And remember, 4-4 four, four is our time signature. So that means there's four beats in the measure and the quarter note gets the beat. So I can make a pattern, for example, I can do a pattern of four, four. So just one measure, right? I'm gonna have you guys do this again this week too. So if I say in the Google form, if you see a four slash four, that's, that's what I mean. I mean the time signature. I just don't have the ability to stack them in the Google form, right? So you can write ta, I'm going to make one up. Don't use this one. <laughs> ta, uh, let's see. This would be a four beat pattern. Let me put it all together. Oh, here we go. Right? Ta, ta, ti, ti. Half note, quarter, eighth, eighth. Half note, quarter, eighth, eighth. Ta, ta, ti, ti. That would be four beats in one measure, right? Pretend there's bar lines on either side, right? Bar line, bar line, measure. Whatever's in the middle. So pretend there's bar lines on either side of this. So this is an example of a measure of four, four using ta, ta, and ti, ti. And you can put them in any order that you want. Okay, so we'll do this again this week. All right, so 4-4, four, four. since we're on the topic of time signature, our favorite topic, um, four beats in the measure, quarter note gets the beat. What if I ask you, what if I ask you, that means I'm going to, what if I ask you for a measure of 3-4? What is that going to mean? That is going to mean that instead of four beats in the measure, I'm going to only have three beats in the measure with the quarter note getting the beat. So I can do 
three, four. Ta, ta. One, two, one. Half note, quarter. That's three beats with the quarter note getting the beat. Make sense? Sort of, kind of. All right, we're going to try it this week and see what happens. All right. Awesome, awesome. Let's keep moving on. So, moving on. Aha, uh -huh, I have a note card with our bar line, bar line measure. Don't forget it. What I want to talk about this week, I know we're going to be reviewing that stuff, but I want to throw something new because I want us to have plenty of time to go over it before the end of the school year, okay? So, new note alert. Most of you guys know it. Most of you guys have asked me about it and have wanted to see it. And you say, Miss Lisa, why haven't we learned it yet? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, here it comes. <laughs> So, new note, has a note head, has a stem, you can't see me drawing, but I'm drawing it, I promise, and has two flags. The note head is filled in, of course, because it is not a half note or a whole note of any sorts. It is a 16th note. Wow, those are very long flags. <laughs> I made very long flags on this 16th note. The 16th note's been in quarantine, so its flags got long. It's kind of like hair. <laughs> Miss Lisa's hair got long. <laughs> I was inspired. All right, so 16th note comes after the 8th note, right? So if we were looking at our tree, our music note tree that we've drawn out like a hundred times, we always have like two of each, right? So we would have two eighth notes or we would have one eighth note and it would stem down to equal two sixteenth notes. So the way you put two sixteenth notes together is like you're gonna pretend my note heads are completely filled in like this so you can see it looks just like tt where's tt tt where are you oh there it is okay so looks very similar to two eighth notes but instead of one flag being connected now there are two flags being connected pretty crazy. I know. Music, some crazy stuff. All right. So if this was in the tree, this would be the next part of our tree that we have not gone over. You would have eighth note branching down you would have eighth note branching down to two sixteenth notes. Okay. So if you think about it in like decimals, right, in math class, when you have 0.5, or think of it, let's not even talk about decimals. Let's talk about like change, like money, okay? So if I have half of a dollar, so let's pretend the quarter note's a dollar. This is going to be 50 cents. Half of a dollar is 50 cents, right? What if I need to break the 50 cents in half? Then I have two quarters, 25 cents. So it's like 25 cents and 25 cents, right? It's like 25 cents, 25 cents, and this would be like 50 cents. And then above that would be a quarter note, which would be like a dollar, right? So it's super easy to think about it in money form rather than anything else, okay? Now, the thing I want is to learn how to count first. The easiest way to learn how to count a 16th note is going to be actually putting four 16th notes together. I know, you're saying, Miss Lisa, you're insane. Why would you ever do that to me? I promise it will be okay. So you have note head, and you can go ahead and draw this along with me if you want. 
So you're going to have a note head, stem, note head, stem, and you're going to be drawing these consecutively. So note head, stem, note head, stem, note head, stem, note head, stem. Note head, stem. Ugh, these are wonky. Note head, <laughs> stem. Sincerely apologize. <laughs> these are going to look weird. So make sure you fill in your note heads if you're drawing along with me. And then you're going to draw one line across. Let's see if we can come, come up with the same thing. And then your second line across. All right, look at mine. So if you wanna draw yours after me, that's fine. So this is my, these are my four 16th notes running together. See how I have my two rows so I can show that it's a 16th note, right? Because if I, if I took away one of these, it would be four eighth notes together. So it's super important to make sure that you have both of these lines running across so that I know it's a 16th note. And then we have note head, note head, note head, note head, stem, 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 and our line showing our flags connecting, okay? The way you will count this is we are now going to be starting to count in numbers. We're getting advanced. Fifth grade, I'm prepping you for middle school. Fourth grade, I'm just pushing you along. <laughs> so this is going to be one, E, and, a. Uh. Listen to it. One, E, and, a. Uh. I'll draw it up so you can see it. One, E, like the vowel, and, I'm going to put an and sign instead of like writing out and, uh, like the letter A, like a short A vowel. You see it? One, E, and, uh. And it goes quick, right? Depending on our tempo. So it would be like one E and a, 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 one E and a. Okay? So I know this is like super new, but we're going to work on this for like this week and next week. The pre We're going to have two different songs that we're going to practice this with. The first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to use the, um, the speaking rhythmic pattern of woodchuck. Has any, I'm sure some of you have heard of this. The how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood, right? Some of you have heard this. Now that beginning part mixes eighth notes, quarter notes, and 16th notes. So that's not going to be our focus part this week. The part we're going to focus on is the next part of woodchuck. And typically we just hear that first part. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood, <laughs> right? But this week we're going to focus on the next line that comes after that. It's chuck a lot of wood, chuck a lot of wood, chuck a lot of, chuck a lot of, chuck a lot of wood. Okay? So let's go over those first two lines. For those of you that haven't heard this before, I'm going to slow it down a bit. So it goes, how, let's, I'll go first and you can repeat after me at home. How much wood could a wood chuck chuck? If a wood chuck could chuck wood. If a wood chuck could chuck wood. Do that again. It's tricky. I know. It's a tongue twister. How much wood could a wood chuck chuck? If a wood chuck could chuck wood. <laughs> Whole first phrase. How much wood could a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? Here, your turn. How much wood could a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? Awesome. Okay, so the next part is really the part we're going to focus on that has our a lot of our 16th notes running together in a grouping of four. So it is chuck a lot of wood. Chuck a lot of wood, 
chuck a lot of chuck a lot of chuck a lot of wood so this piece this rhythm is in four 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 beats to each measure bar line bar line measure so my one measure can have one e and a it can have one e and a up to four times but you can see that our pattern is not one e and a one e and a one e and a i'm not continuing to say chuck a lot of chuck a lot of chuck a lot of chuck a lot of because that's what's being represented by the 16th note right is chuck a lot a chuck a lot up when we get to that second row the chuck a lot of wood chuck a lot of wood chuck a lot of chuck a lot of chuck a lot of wood that's being represented by 16th notes chuck a lot of wood chuck a lot of wood chuck a lot of chuck a lot of chuck a lot of wood right so the word wood in this second phrase is actually going to be a quarter note let me pull it out quarter note so you're going to have chuck a lot of wood chuck a lot of wood chuck a lot of chuck a lot of chuck a lot of wood can you say that with me with the words first we're going to say it with the words and then we're going to say it with the actual rhythm okay i'll teach you how to say it with the rhythm in a second let's do it with the words one two ready with the words chuck a lot of wood chuck a lot of wood chuck a lot of chuck a lot of chuck a lot of wood good job now we're going to say it or that second phrase with one e and uh and then can we still say wood for now actually can we just focus on our 16th notes for now so for example it'll be one e and a uh, wood <laughs> one e and a uh, wood one e and a uh, one e and a uh, one e and a uh, wood okay do it with me here we go one two ready here we go one e and a uh, wood one e and a uh, wood one e and a uh, one e and a uh, one e and a uh, wood now instead of this still being our word can we make this an actual and well it is an actual beat but can we actually say like how much it's worth it's worth one right so this is gonna be in the measure can we well let's not go by measure since you can't see the music but can we say how many beats it is so we can say one e and a one one e and a one one e and a one e and a one e and a one let's do that together here we go just numbers just our how much they're worth here we go one two ready go one e and a one one e and a one one e and a one e and a one e and a one nice job now can we do from the beginning how much wood could a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood can we do that and go straight into the second part with just one e and a one one e and a one can we do that here we go that's how we'll end today and then we'll keep working on it next week okay here we go one two from the beginning, how much wood could a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? One e and a one, one e and a one, one e and a one e and a one e and a one. Nice job. So you see that I took a break before going into the second um, part of our piece or the second part of our the second phrase, right? Before we did this. That's because there's a rest there. There's actually a quarter rest. I'll try to see if I can send this to you guys so you can see what the music looks like. Um, I can't find my rest one. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Ha 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 ha. Here it is. There's actually a quarter rest. It's upside down. <laughs> there's a quarter rest after. So it's how much wood could a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood. There's a rest. So that's why we have that break to like breathe, okay? So in your Google form for this week, I'm going to ask a lot about the 16th note, okay? That's our highlight. That's what we really need to start focusing on learning. And we need to, and you'll have questions about time signature, 
I'll ask you to make another phrase using um, half note, quarter note, and eighth notes, okay? You don't have to make a rhythmic phrase with the 16th notes yet. You can just do it with half note, quarter note, and eighth note. And there will probably be an, a question asking for a four beat pattern, four beat rhythmic pattern in four four and one in three four. Most of you guys did it right last time, but for those of you that were confused, if you have any questions, go ahead and message me before you do it, okay? So one in four four, one in three four. And there will be questions about our musical eras, and I'll throw in some questions about dynamics so we don't forget, okay? All right. Um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. I know it's kind of been rainy this week, so I hope you're staying inside, enjoying some music, um, enjoying some movies, getting all your homework done. You are so very missed. I miss you guys so, so much. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this class. I'll see you guys. Bye.